Hi everyone, it's Jan with What You Make It, and I apologize for my very squeaky voice. Um, this is actually the best voice I've had in about two weeks, so I am going to try and make it through this particular um, little tutorial without um, with you being able to hear it. I'm sorry, I have been just a little under the weather and had zero voice, but I wanted to get this tutorial to you in case you might want to make either the little quirky turkey that we learned how to make from with Tim Holtz last year and my I'm calling this the funky pumpkin I have made these for our Thanksgiving <clears throat> meal next next week I'm instead of of this little card right here I'm going to use them as place settings so that people we can put their names on them and these I'm just going to put on the table I just think they're so fun and they are made with the Tim Holtz rosette die so I'm going to take you through the steps of making and putting this together you can see that we have one of the large rosettes we have two of the medium and two of the small. And if you are using the dies, that means you just need to make cut one of the large rosette and you need to make two cuts of the small and medium one. And because I have this, I'm going to use it. But if you do not have this die and want to, to make that, let me give you some measurements because really you can score these, um, you can make them just out of strips and score them. The thing that makes this, I think, work is that the scoring is done for you in a quarter of an inch. The long die is 10 and one quarter inch by one and a quarter. You would make your strip of paper a ten, ten and a quarter and as it would need to be one and a quarter wide and you'll need a punch or something to do that one. You would need to make one of those and if you got your strip and then used your scoreboard to score it on every quarter inch you'll end up with something similar. You can use an edge punch and, and punch the edge of it to give it a scalloped look. You know, I, I want you to be able to make everything that you want to make, even if you don't have all of the, the same tools. So we have one that's 10 and a quarter by one and a quarter, and then you would need to cut two strips at nine and three quarters by one inch, so two by nine and three quarters by one inch, and one that is nine and a quarter inches by half an inch. And I'll put those up on the screen for you. I didn't use these little punches, but I, I cut them anyway. So let me let me show you how I prepared this. I wanted to use book paper and when I cut it, I, I did some dictionary paper and when I cut it the first time it was just very, very, very flimsy. So what I ended up doing was taking my dictionary paper and actually using some Mod Podge to put it onto a piece of cardstock, both sides. You want to put your um, either your gel medium, your white glue, whatever. You just want to make sure that there is a good seal on both sides because you're going to be able to see both sides of the, the little rosette. You need to have paper on both sides. And using just a kind of a thin card stock to put it to will make it um, hold up much better. So I made three strips that are two inches by 12 inches because I just cut a 12 inch piece of, of cardstock into two inch strips. 
and now I'm going to stain them. And to do this, I'm going, I'll show you how I did one and then I'll come back and do the others. You can do all kinds of inking techniques. You could take your Distress ink and go directly to the, um, to the paper. I wanted a little more intense color for mine. So I ended up getting my re-inkers out. These are dye um, distress re-inkers. If you have another kind, you know, that would that would work well. The reason that I'm using this instead of the distress stains is because I really want intense, intense, intense color and I want to be able to layer it over it. So I'm working on my craft mat and I am using Tattered Straw, Wild Honey, and Rusty Hinge. And I'm just going to take the, and put a few drops <clears throat> out. Guys, I apologize for this voice. I'm hoping it'll hold out for long enough for us to finish this little project. Okay, that was the Wild Honey. And then the Rusty Hinge is the darkest. And I'm going to put a few drops out here for that. And this number of drops is probably going to be enough to do both sides of one and get started on the second one. And I'll just keep adding to it as I go. I'm going to take a mister with some water and I want to put quite a bit of water down in here. Now you could put some perfect pearls or something in this or use one of your mists. The reason that I'm not is because I'm going to add stickles on here and so that's going to give me my shine and I'm just not going to use up my um, that particular product. Now I'm just going to put this in and I'm going to turn it that mixes the colors together. See how intense that is? And I'm going to take my heat gun and dry it. And I'm going to do this for both sides. And I'll be back and show you the next step. Okay, so I have my three pieces that have been stained on both sides. And before I go run them through the die cutter, I want to just give you a couple little tips and tricks that I should have told you to begin with. When you are putting your book paper or dictionary paper onto your cardstock, make sure that you don't get any glue on the front side. You can see, this reminded me, I had just a little bit of it show up down here and you'll see that it it resists the stain so when you're adding your book paper to the to the cardstock just make sure you put your glue on the back side of it and don't accidentally get any on the front if you do honestly because this is a distress technique it it'll just add to the charm but that is what causes that right there you will also notice that I have lovely stained ready for Thanksgiving um, fingers <clears throat> So if you are trying to do this right before um, your event, you may want to use gloves. Um, but I will let you know that if you get really cheap shampoo and put it in your bathroom and wash your hands with that, it'll take the color right the out. The third thing is you want to make sure that they are very, very, very dry before you go to this next step. Um, the if you're using vintage book paper, it's going to absorb a lot of fluid and that will break down the fibers. So you want to make sure that it's very, very, very dry before we go, you go to the next step. If you're making a bunch of these like um, I am doing, then I have done them and I've put them on um, some cookie cooling racks or cake cooling racks and I've just let them dry overnight. I've used my heat gun to move this one along but if you're doing a bunch of them just leave them out overnight and they'll they'll dry and you can come back to them. 
So I'm going to go run these through my die cutting machine. I'm going to cut two of this one and one of this one, and I'll be back. So I have run these through, and see, I'm just going to punch them out. So anyway, yeah, I I use this die often, um, but so I think it's it's one of those things that I'm glad that I have it because taking the time to score these is a little tedious and time consuming. But I will also let you know that if you haven't seen it, he has come out with a version of this that is a snowflake and it's really pretty. I'm it's on my wish list, so I'm going to be looking at that in the next week or so cuz I think that'd be fun. Now, <clears throat> here is my next little tip and I totally learned this from Tim last year when I was making the quirky turkeys um, and that is that the benefit of having the dye is that it does the perforation so that for kind of like the scoring the reason that it's kind of a it can be a little bit of a downside is that in order to put the perforations in there it's actually cutting through the paper and so it makes it where when you're doing the folding it has a tendency to just tear off and so to reinforce it um, Tim suggested using some of his paper tape and I'm using some washi tape that blends well with my paper and I'm just putting it down on one side because it's thin and flexible, it's it will um, it's not going to get in the way of you f doing your folding. But because it doesn't have the perforations on it, it it strengthens it. If you don't have washi tape, you can use some masking tape or something um, like that. I just I line it up against the edge on these medium ones, and then I have a little trick for the smaller ones that, that makes it work. Then I get my two smaller ones and I put them right next to each other with their non-scalloped edge back to back and I take a piece of washi tape and I just kind of split the difference between both of them. It'll be enough to hold them <clears throat> together. Then I take my scissors and just go down the middle of it here. Easy as pie. Okay, so our next step is to get all of these folded. So I've zoomed in here so you can see that we just do mountain and valley. You're just folding them back and forth like an accordion. And I just finger press with each one. And let me hold this up here. You can see on this side that doesn't have the washi tape that where you those perforations are you can see that there's a little weakness in the paper so you can see why using the washi tape or masking tape can really make a big difference okay I'm gonna get all of these folded and I'll be back with the next step I, thought I would come back and show you this last little bit here I find that I get just about this far into it and I start struggling trying to hold the accordion together and you know what it's really okay just let the accordion go just make sure that you are continuing the accordion folds you know that you didn't skip one or get it going the opposite direction but it begins to be hard to get a good finger press on it so I just stop trying to hold on to it and move on to the next section 
And as soon as I've got this last little bit done here, I'll show you. So we've got all our valleys. <clears throat> now to make the circle, I'm going to use a little bit of score tape. You want to use a little, you want to use some pretty strong adhesive here. I find that using a wet glue is not my favorite at this point. Um, I want something that has a real good sturdy bond. A version of this that I think is called red liner tape that also works really well um, and if you have a lot of patience okay, I'm just going to press this down here and I'm going to concentrate on it because apparently if I stop paying attention to it it gets persnickety okay so I want this is the sticky side I put the sticky on the upside of the last valley then I bring the other side over and I match the edges up and slide it down in there and then just do a good finger press okay so you still by overlapping them they're not pulling against each other if you do, it's better to not butt them up against each other and we now have our circles. For the leaf and the stem, leaf and the stem, and for the head on the turkey, I used some sticky back canvas. You can use cardstock or whatever, but I like this because it has a, a good canvas feel to it. And I used a die cutting shape that I had but you can use a punch or you can can hand cut something like this out to stain the canvas because you want to do this before I used um, <clears throat> two distress inks I used shabby shutters and peeled paint rubbed them directly onto the um, sticky back canvas and then um, sprayed them with a little bit of water just to kind of let it blend I think it gives a nice rustic feel to it and you end up with I've cut these shapes out and I've got a couple of these and I'm going to show you how to make this leaf um, to create this vine I had a um, Prima one of these I don't know what they're called vines or, or whatever but really and truly this is just um, floral wire that's been covered so I I took two or three of these little sprigs I'm gonna do that and I made <clears throat> a little leaf and I'm going to show you how I did that Took. Okay, so we peel the back off the sticky back canvas, and I am going to take one of these pieces of wire and I'm going to put it down on here. This is going to be the um, center of my leaf, so then I'm just going to fold. The sticky back canvas over onto that vine or that floral wire and then I'm just going to cut a leaf shape out here and what that does is that gives me the ability to bend my leaf a little bit and something to attach it to the rest of the pumpkin myth and let me show you on here I took kind of a little bit more I wouldn't use my good fabric scissors on here but you see I I didn't want the the 
kind of that top part of the pumpkin to be wanted it to have a little bit more um, realistic look to it so what I'm doing is I'm just making taking this and cutting a few little shapes out of it so that it it has I don't know, maybe a little, little more like a leaf. The other thing I'm going to do while I still have the paper attached to it is I'm going to fold it back over on itself and cut a slit in it because it's easier to do that now that I can put my stem down through when I'm done. And I'm going to just fold this part over and put it up through the bottom of that little slit. I think this just gives you a little bit more of a finished look. And just st stick and edge of that down. There we go. So we've got our our pumpkin top is is ready to go. We've got our leaf, and now we're all we've got to do is make our little rosettes. Okay. When I get to this stage where I'm now going to put the rosettes together, I get out my hot glue mat, and I don't. I guys, I've looked to see if I can figure out where I got it. I know I picked it up at a craft fair at some point. But it's really great. It's silicone. Nothing's going to stick to it. Um, it comes with a spatula and some of these little hot finger, hot silicone, hot tip fingers. It's great for working on these kinds of projects because in reality, what we're doing is I, I'm wrestling it into submission at this point. Um, and I will tell you that I really do think that this is where having the washi tape on there makes it a little easier because when we, you want to put the part that you want on the outside, the scalloped edge, you want to put that down. You can see you've got a straight edge and you've got a scallop edge. When you have it in the form of the ring, you put the scalloped edge down and you just start by trying to squeeze all of it to the center and then I use, I reach down and just kind of get pull the edges up and you can see that it forms that rosette. And when I started making these back when the die first came out, I'm telling you I've had a lot of frustration because I was trying to put it on these little circles and wrangle it with glue and it just didn't work. But now that I have started just putting a good size dollop of hot glue down and I go ahead and form the rosette kind of off to the side. I put the dollop of hot glue down and then just kind of lift the flower over onto it. And because the hot glue goes up and actually grabs the ends of each of these little ridges, it just, it does a great job of putting them together. And you can take your little punch circles and put them on top if you're wanting to use these as as flowers. Um, I just find that it's so much easier. I was I was losing my mind trying to make these flowers when I was trying to hold it long enough for um, wet glue to set up. Okay, I'm not going to show you how to um, I'm not going to make one of these of the quirky turkeys for you, but I'm going to show you. Um, this I cut out of some scrap paper that I have, and that's a great way to use up your scraps. You can make some of these um, little rosettes and keep them in your stash when, when you need them. But the trick to making this particular version is you do use one of the bases, and what you, you need one large, one medium, and one small, and you line them up on this bottom edge. So when you stand them up, you can see they're even here and you can attach 
the bottom to it and that gives you that the the tail feather fan of that really cute very fun and then I just put a little um, memo pen stuck down into the back of it and that makes our little name place holder so let's get our little pumpkins together now I found that the easiest way is to center on top of the the biggest one and I'm going to actually build downwards um, so I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to put some glue here in the center and I'm going to take my medium put it right on top just kind of center it put some glue on this next section and you're probably seeing the smoke and that that is a result of kind of heating up some of the there's still some dampness in my <clears throat> paper because I hurried it along with the, the, the heat tool okay now I'm going to put this base on and you want to put that on and turn it over so you can get a night use make it nice and level okay we're going to build upwards so I'm in the market for a, a good high temp glue gun that has a fine point but isn't this one okay Just keep going here. We're going to put our top on. And now we're going to put our, our stem on. And if you have all of this done in advance, it just, you can just kind of assembly line these. And because it's got that sticky on it, can put a little glue in the center then bring let the sticky back canvas connect to the, the paper for the rest of it okay the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the leaf so I'm going to kind of bend this and then I'm going to take a paintbrush and come down here at the end and just do the little twirly vine thing. That's fun. Put a little glue here. And I kind of pick a side and put the glue for my leaf and my vine. Take another piece. <clears throat> That's what I'm going to do. Just twirl it around to make the vine. You can again. You can use floral wire. You can whatever you like. I'm just going to kind of put a little more glue here. I'm going to let this come up underneath. Bring this around. Let it come up underneath my my leaf. So we've got another little. There we go. Okay, we're on the home stretch here, guys. And what I do this is spiced marmalade distress stickles. Um, if you just wanted to use some glue and some glitter. I think that would work well. I just go in should have had this upside down. I'm just putting a, a pretty good dollop in these okay in each of these sections okay, I'm not going to mess
mess with it for you right now. And I take my paintbrush, and if you'll dip this in water before you start messing with this, it will it will keep it from ruining your paintbrush. And I'm just bring kind of spreading it out, putting it on the edges here. Working all those I everybody has their favorite products, don't they? I like distress stickles because the the glue part, the liquid part of it is it dries to a matte finish instead of, you know, a glossy finish and the glitter obviously is um, tinted the color that you're you're working with but in the rock candy stickles that is just um, the clear I, I like it for when I'm making kind of distressed vintage -y projects like this because when it dries you really get the get the shine of the glitter but you don't get I think I need to get some more of these don't I particularly if I'm going to finish a bunch of these bunky bunkins okay I'm not going to make you watch all of that but you just work your way around I don't worry about putting it down underneath because Nobody's going to see that. You say put your product where it counts the most. You're going to get the, the most impact. Okay? And you can put a little bit up here on your, up on the, the stem. Just give it a nice little. So, uh, first of all, I hope you all are having some fun craft time still with fall. I am getting ready to start things for the Christmas series. I have a lot of fun projects that I want to share with you, and honestly, I had hoped to be in the middle of them with you prior to this, but my voice just was not being very helpful. So, I'm going to try and make sure I get the rest of my voice back and I'll be back with some more projects soon. But I hope you, if you're here in the United States, I hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving. Um, if you are elsewhere in the world, I hope that um, that you have an opportunity to, to have a moment of gratitude for the things that are good, the people that are good in your life and know that um, Counting my blessings this year, I, I feel like you all are definitely one of the things that, that God has blessed me with. And I'm so grateful for the friendships that I formed, the inspiration that I get from you all. And so whether you are celebrating Thanksgiving or just um, in the fall season, wherever you are, um, no, I'm grateful for you. And I'll be back soon with another project. Have fun making some quirky turkeys or some funky pumpkins. I'll see you soon. Bye.